we're out here in the summertime and the pico perch real close resembles a little inch and a half or two inch bluegill that everything in the lake is feeding on this is a food source for walleye which we contribute to today uh, crappie eat bluegill bass eat bluegill what makes this such a, a fantastic summer bait is it's got a lot of action but it's a tighter action now as as nature warms up the water things get more active and and the wiggles on things get a little tighter and everything that's why uh, the pico perch tends to shine. This bait is designed to be, as far as casting and retrieving, it's designed to be a countdown and retrieve bait. So you can actually count it down a foot a second to a depth that you want it to and then retrieve it. And the action that you'll get out of it is a, is a lot of action, but it's a tight action. Um, it's just an all round good bait fish mimicking perfect size shape of a bait fish and it's got the right action for some fantastic summertime fishing okay so what we're out here doing with these baits today we're marking a whole lot of shad we're in 20 foot of water and we're marking shad down here anywhere from seven and a half to 10 or 11 foot deep so what we're doing is pushing these crankbaits off the front of the boat method scotty vance has helped us to get down to a science we're using one of his three ounce weights and we're putting this bait down on a 45 degree angle. We're running about 1.4, 1.5 mile an hour with it. And we're going through these schools of shad. Now, if you let this thing down to approximately 14 foot on a 45 degree angle, you're gonna get about 11 foot depth out of your bait running behind that weight. And that's putting this right through the schools of shad. Every now and then we even hear our rods clank when they hit a shad or something. We've got beads on the end of our rod tips and that, that lets us have an audible as well as a visual. And these fish are hitting this thing and absolutely slamming the rod tips down in the water when they grab it. It looks real. They think it's real. Okay, so the time of year that I will start with the crankbaits, and I know some guys that'll, that'll be trolling even pre-spawn with them, but I, I kind of like to just, I like my jigs. I like my single pole action during pre-spawn and spawn. You know those fish are going to be in a brush pile. You're going to know they're moving up shallow, and they get really easy to catch. This time of year, people on crappie you have to realize a crappie is a predator fish these fish today are out here roaming channel ledges and flats they're chasing schools of shad they're almost just a good tasting striper right now they're out putting everything in their mouth they can put in their mouth so the time of year to start doing this for me is is post spawn once they quit spawning they leave these shoreline bushes and trees and everything and they're going to come out here on these ledges they're going to rest up and then they're going to start looking for something to eat and that's what we're out here doing we're fall you find the shad this time of year you'll find the crappie now i'll continue doing this and i'll follow those shad and they're going to get out there in 25 and 30 foot of water on this lake and they're going to they're going to follow break lines and where the shad go the fish are going to go now this fall they're going to start their progress back up here and they're going to be back on these flats again and everything and by the time that water gets down to about 60 65 i'm about in the mode to get back in to slow it down get my jigs back on and get my jigs back in front of them at that time okay so one of the colors we've chosen today is a smoky shad like we showed you there's a ton of shad in this area so we're trying to kind of mimic mimic the colors of the shad this is slightly dark colored water we're using kind of a dark shad type of pattern and um, that's the reason we went with the color today now we've also caught some fish on some crankbaits today and we're kind of using some uh, brighter colors but we're also trolling those quite a bit deeper these fish you know you got to think about water clarity and your color selection if we're taking these baits and we're trying to get it into that seven and a half to 11 foot zone where the fish are looking up at shad and they're feeding up on shad and that's kind of what they're looking at is the bottom of this thing and they're coming up it's the right size right shape and it's also got a sound that they can home in on if we're going to get a crankbait down into some of the deeper schools into that 17 and 18 foot of water we're going to be further back behind the boat and we're going to use some brighter colors which are going to lose a whole lot of their their color density once they get down at that level the light penetration will take that away from them you put a bait like this down 20 foot in this color of water and it's almost going to be completely invisible you take a bright pink bait or a flashy bait like zombie and you get it down there into that light zone and the zombie will pick up whatever light refraction there is or the that bright pink bait will actually turn a light gray kind of like the color of a shad that you see swimming in the water and that's that's one of the reasons for choosing uh, based on your water clarity the different colors of baits that you use 
Okay, I'll let you in on one more little tip, secret, to catching more crappie, and that's to put a scent trail in the water for them. Crappie.com's very own slab sauce, formulated just for crappie, but it will attract a walleye every now and then too. Sticks to that bait like glue. Mm -hmm.